So, wow, we got, uh, got some good participation on this one. That's great. Um, so my name's Rick Sir. I work in the e-learning department. Um, most of what I do is the video end of things. I help you guys uh, create videos that you may use over and over again in your courses. Um, and so the other part of what I do is about probably four years ago, I, I took on kind of filling in doing closed captions uh, for um, DSS when they, when they ask, hey, we need some captions for these courses. And so we've been working on a process to help uh, the instructors uh, when they get a, a request. So coming with that um, means I have to be able to get in and find these videos that uh, are used in the courses. That in itself can be a challenge. And sometimes that takes me a lot of time to find out that. And so I know we've all kind of been thrown in the hopper all at once uh, because of COVID. And, um, you know, we got help to get you guys up and going and, and such. And now we'd like to teach you a little bit about some file management. And with doing that, hopefully that will help me. <laughs> so this is kind of a, a self-serving kind of thing. Um, but so... I guess do most, I guess if you look at your reactions down below, how many of you actually use Canvas and how many of you actually use more something else? A thumbs up or a hands, you know, would be fine. Okay. Looks like most everybody use Canvas. Okay. Awesome. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to work with Panopto primarily um, and going in how to manage those files. Um, so I will start sharing my screen here. Okay. All right. So I will get into Panopto. Now I'm just going to go from square one. I use Chrome. I'm on a Mac and, uh, I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go from square one. I normally use the employee portal. Everybody else kind of gets there a little bit differently, um, but we'll sign into Canvas. So obviously there's many ways to, to get into this. I'm gonna to try to show you maybe uh, a simple way of doing this. And then I'm gonna show you hopefully what I would consider a simpler way of keeping all this organized. Um, so as you can see, these are kind of the courses I'm in as you would have on your dashboard. Um, and so when you would get into a course, you would, I'm just going to go into the e-learning one here. Um, and you would go into your Panopto recordings. And you would go to create. And you would create a new session. So when you get into this session, Obviously, in this, we've gone over this, but I'm going to go over it real, real quick. As you can see, this folder here, it goes into the default term. And so if you were to open your class, uh, English or math or whatever, it would go into your default term. And then obviously your session, this is where you would uh, record, uh, or excuse me, rename your session. So we'd call it Math 102 or English 99, whatever. And we'd set it up, record our session. And then when we saved it, it would be saved back into this default term. <clears throat> so this is where you would have to go look for your course, obviously. Um, when you record your session, if you did not change the name here to math or English or whatever, you would be given that opportunity at the end of the recording as well. And then you would save it. Panopto would process it and put it into this default folder. Um, one other um, way you might do this, and Jerry Troop did this, was to choose your My Folder. And instead of putting it into your class that you entered Panopto from, you would put it into your My Folder. Okay. So um, I'm going to escape out of this real quick. And... Let's see, let me get back into this here. Let me go back into Panopto. 
I'm going to record something real quick. We'll see if it'll let me. So again, we are re uh, recording in the e-learning folder. I did not change the name here. And I've got everything else is kind of set up. We'll record uh, that. We'll stop it. Recording complete. This is the second chance you have to rename your video. So I would highly suggest you name your videos and not leave it as this default term. So I'm just going to call this test folder oops, management. And I'll upload it. Okay, so it is uploading. Okay. Give it a little bit here. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my. And if we refresh this within Panopto, you can see here it is. It went to this folder right here. Now, if I had chose the my folder, I don't know why I keep getting that. Um, I could easily have gone to this drop down and clicked on my folder. The my folder is something that is assigned to your name when you sign in to Canvas and Panopto because they're kind of linked. And so if you were to put all your videos into your my folder, they would show up there as obviously there's not anything here because I don't use my folder. But let's say you do and you go to your my folder. You can add subfolders and you could call this math 102. Hit enter. And then right, so that shows up. You could go to math 102. Remember this is your my folder. You went to your math 102 folder. And then from there, you can go into Panopto and record a new session. And when you record that session and you stop it, it will go into your math 102 folder and not just be put on uh, Panopto somewhere. Ah. Let's go back to Panopto recordings. Um, drop down again, it's going to load everything. You go to your my folder. Let's say you teach English. 105. Okay, hit enter. There, created that folder for English 105. And so when you open the English 105 folder, you still have the option to go to create new Panopto recording, and then that video will be put into your English 105 folder. So there's one way to kind of manage how you, uh, you uh, record your videos and keep them organized within folders is by using the My Folder. Um, is there any questions with that? Okay, cool. <laughs> so that's one way, and Jerry Troop taught me that, and that's kind of that's kind of cool. The the thing about it is, is when I have to go in and look for you, uh, let's say you get an accommodation from a student that wants closed captions on your videos, so then I have to search, hopefully in your my folder, which has a subfolder for the course you're teaching that holds those videos. Now you can also use the videos within those folders and link them to several different courses through the copy and paste of the, uh, of the link like you would normally do within your campus. All right, so let's go back to Okay, so let's go back to um, Canvas. So that's one way to do that. And that's by going into your course and finding your My Folder. Something that I enjoy doing and I find it a lot easier is I create 
a master videos course. And whenever I record a video, I go to this course and open it and record my video. And in the same sense, you can still create folders that will, um, folders that you can have for your class and keep them organized. But the nice thing about this is that you don't have to go to your my folder or your course. It's all sitting right here on your desktop. And so how do you do that? You just start a new course and then you label it and it's unpublished. And so uh, you'd be able to just to go in and every time you want to update a video or record a new one, you could add a new folder, say, you know, I don't know, Math 102, 2020 or, or whatever. And then you would You could edit everything in here and do what you wanted. And then once it's done, you could uh, link it to your, to your course. I got too many things going on here. I can't get out of this one. Ah. I guess I'll have to get back in. I dumped myself out. Okay, so that's a real easy way to keep things organized. Um, and, and so if you were to say, hey, Rick, I need accommodations, I could go in as a administration, administrative, I could find, see your classes here, and I'd know that all your videos were under this class. And so I could go in And I could hit settings and then I could just hit captions and I could send them in for, for captioning through our third party. All right, so now we've got a situation where you've got all your classes, okay? And your videos are sitting in each course. And you're saying, well, Rick, how can I get these organized if they're already in here? And they're all just sitting in Panopto. So let's just go into eLearning Academy. And we'll pretend this is one of your courses. You go to your Panopto recordings. Okay. So from here, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to move your videos around, you need to actually go to the uh, Panopto server. And so by doing that, this little arrow right here, will send you to the Panopto server. Right now you're looking at things through Canvas. But if you do that, it's still gonna open up within the folder where all your videos are, okay? And so as you hover over each one of these, look at how this little box shows up, okay? So let's say you had, you know, all these classes from, I don't know, six years ago and you still use them, but they're all kind of hit and miss. So when I check this little box, these show up, the delete, copy, move, share. So I'm undelete it, they go away. You delete it, they come back, okay? And you can go through and you can click each one of these that you want to move. Okay, so I'm just gonna move one for this purpose. So, if you move the video, it's gonna move the entire video, obviously, to a new folder. If you copy the video, it's gonna leave this video here, but also place it in the location you want it to. So I'm gonna copy this. And when I do, it shows, gives me the option with a dropdown. Now, Obviously, you have my folder, which you could move it into. Uh, 
And then there's my Rick's master videos, which that was the new course that I created on my desktop. And I can put it in there. And then once you hit copy, it moves it in there. Um, let me go out of that out of let's go with copy one more time. Let's see if I can't remember if I had a math. Anyway, if you typed in math, these would show up all your, your, the courses for math that we've had. So if you said, oh, that's, you know, all my videos are in these, in this folder. Well, I would have to search around and try to find the right folder where the, all those are originally housed from. So obviously you get your Rick's master videos, copy it over. Done. Okay. So now, I got it. all this stuff up top. I can't see. Um, if I went to my Rick's master videos and opened it, went to Panopto. There it is right there. It just came over. And then I could, you know, since chemistry 102 or English 99, when I hit that drop down menu, let's add Let's add something really unique, like, um, I don't know, COVID 2020. There. Okay. So if I said, oh, shoot, I didn't put this in the right folder, or I'm back at my original folder, maybe, I still need to go to Panopto everything. And it opens it up in the folder where it's at. But again, as I hover over and check it, I can copy that drop down menu. And because I don't see it listed here, I could type in COVID. Whoops. Oh, there was no match for COVID 2020. So. Where could it have gone? See, so probably just put it back in the same one. Yep, I did. Copy. Hmm. I wonder if that's because I need to refresh because I just added it. There we go. I had to refresh my, my browser. Okay, so then it got moved into, copied into this one as well. Okay, so the, the secret about moving all your videos um, in your Panopto is to go up to this little uh, arrow here where it'll send you to Panopto, the actual server, and give you the boxes that you can check to move these videos or copy to the location that, that you want to go. Okay, so that's kind of everything in a nutshell. Um, are there questions? Let's see, let's go through here. All right, that's a bummer. Then if we copy instead of move, then we would not need to reshare, right? Okay. You move more videos over, you need to reshare them in your courses. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Although they, if you move them, um, the link stays the same. Is that correct, Ben and Jerry? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, because each Panopto folder has a separate identifier. Um, so you do have to be careful about that. And I would, if you're going to move, if you're going to move videos, you're going to have to test it first. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it, 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 it creates a new, um, a new identifier for the video. But if they were to copy it to a new location, the new location video would have a new link. That's correct. The, the original video would still be at its same location. And That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you, if you copy instead of moving, then you will retain the, the old link. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry. If you move instead of copy, you'll retain the old link. Yeah. So there's a couple of questions here in chat about uh, a couple more questions about moving and then about analytics. So do we want to talk about that now or do you want to wait till after your your uh, no let's 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 hit that now so how will copy moving impact the analytics of these videos uh so these videos if you copy it over like we said it's actually making a new i don't want to say a new video but it's making a new link and so you would have two links because you would have the original one and the one you copied from and then those analytics would be separate so it'd be like two, having two separate classes, if you will. And then the question about, do Panopto videos ever get deleted? No. no, Panopto videos never get deleted. We have 30, almost 30 years of Panopto videos currently stored in Panopto. So no, we will not be deleting. We don't pay for the storage. So it's no, re no reason to delete stuff. Right. And, and how long does our current contract go with Panopto, Jerry? Uh, do you know? We are, th I think we've got two more years on the contract. And as we did before, when we switched from Tegrity to Panopto, what we did was we had Panopto convert all of our Tegrity videos over. So actually, when I go into Panopto and look, I see videos that are 10 years old, which are well before the Panopto contract because we converted all of those videos. And that would be the plan is if we transition to a new vendor, we will transition with the videos being brought over. So there's a question about Zoom recordings. Is there a way to organize where those go? So when the Zoom recording is made, it's also put into Panopto. I'm not good at this workflow. So you guys might have to help me with this one. Uh, but it is also recorded into Panopto. And then from that folder where they are put, you could click on the video and do the exams act workflow. Um, let me go back. So let's just say this was the folder that the Zoom recordings get dumped into. Um, you just go to your everything and it would send you to that folder where the Zoom recordings are. And then by hovering over, checking the box, you could copy, move, share, whatever. Um, and then you would just move it to the folder where you want to move that, that video. Yeah, uh, just as a point of reference, Zoom recordings are stored in a folder under your My Folder called meeting recordings and they automatically go there and if for some reason they're not send me an email and i will find them for you and get them there and get your account set up to do that with thirty thousand accounts in canvas we've got a few duplicates out there so we're cleaning those up bit by bit but yeah they would go into a folder called meeting recordings and then from there you can copy them or you can share them from that folder And I think Chris may be asking specifically about how to designate where those Zoom recordings go. Can they go to a specific course rather than going to my meeting recordings every time and then you have to manually move them? No, no. Because Zoom is a separate application that, that, is, that interfaces with Panopto, we have to set it up to one location for, you know, one, one designated location. And then from there, you'll have to manage them manually. 
So just to reiterate, I find it very easy to, when you record, just make a course and call it your videos. And then when you sign in, you just click on this course and it sends you to Panopter Recordings. And then all your videos are hopefully put into your organized folders within here. You're not sharing screen, Rick. We can't see what oh. you're clicking on. Well, it looks good on my end. That was the best part of my day right there. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Well, Rick, I thought that was the best part of your presentation, but you know. All right. They will try. Whoops. Okay. I got it. I log out again. Okay. Yeah. So like I was saying, I think it's for me and the people that I've known to do this. Uh, if you want to use your, my folder, that's great. I just find it very easier to just to create a new course just for your videos. It doesn't get shared. And then once you get in here, you can create your subfolders for your courses and organize your videos that way. All right, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, we can take other court, other questions if you guys have anything else, but. Um... Hi. H Hello, Yaska speaking. I have a question about how you link your uh, Panopto uh, recording to your, um, your, your, you know, the uh, class. Sometimes sure, sure. I link it directly, they show up a huge screen. Can you resize the screen? Um, so if I was to share, uh, obviously, um, once your video is made and it's within Panopto, uh, if you hit share, you copy this link. Okay, and then you would go. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, I, got, I do that all the time. Thank you for saying that. Okay. So obviously when you get in within your Panopto recordings um, and you find your video and you hit share and you copy your link, you can do that. And then if you go, you know, we'll just put it within an assignment. Mm. All right, we'll just call this uh, test video. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can link it, which that's what we just did by copying that link in the share option. Um, Okay, and then you can change this if you want to also say, you know, play this video. And so they will, uh, when they click on that, it will, it will play. Um, you can also, if you wanna double do it, or just this, you can also just hit your Panopto recordings. And what this will do, this will more like embed the video into your course. And so this takes you to your Panopto recordings where you find it right here and you insert it. And then it shows up. And I always kind of just grab it and, whoops, come on. Where you grab it? See, I, that's, I couldn't get it. There we go. Normally I just grab it like here and it slides open. Maybe it's because I'm in Zoom, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm able to grab just down in the corner here and adjust that so that it, uh, it fits better. Yeah, I'm trying to do that, but I couldn't grab anything. That's why my, uh, that's sort of my question. Yeah. 
Now, I've expanded this before. Try this again. Hmm, that's odd. Usually I am able to grab this corner or move it up and down and expand it out so that it actually fits um, a little bit better. Okay, thank you. And then when obviously hit save once you've, you've made your changes. Hey Rick, Kelly has a question about um, using Zoom to record Hi. to her computer and then how do you upload to Panopto when you have the video file on your computer? Oh, okay. Yeah, good question. So let's say um, you recorded your Zoom session and you re and you saved it on your desktop. Is that correct? Um, so what you would do is you'd open your course, hopefully, or go to your My Folder within Panopto, and then once you hit Create, you get this option to upload media so you could actually have you know been at the beach this summer and found something really cool you know with trees or waves or something I don't know and uh, you recorded it on your phone and then from your phone you could upload it or let's just say from your phone you emailed it to yourself and then you put it on your desktop either way you have this option to upload media and once you do that this opens up and then you just drag your video into here. Let's see if I got something on here. There we go. And it would upload. Now, the thing about this is always wait until you got the check mark. If you don't have the check mark, it's not uploaded. And if you logged out, it would stall and stop and it wouldn't upload until you logged in again, okay? So when you upload it, always make sure that you've got the check mark. And then that, now you can see it's processing and it's loading into your, into your Panopto. What else you guys got? We got time. Let's see what we got in here. One new question. Is there a way to upload YouTube video into Panopto, including my comments, either written or spoken at certain points in the video? <clears throat> so upload a YouTube video. I have not been able to upload a YouTube video into Panopto unless I own the video and it's on my YouTube channel, then I can download it and upload it in such a way that I just showed you from your desktop. Anybody else? Penny? I think you can. Straight, um, from, straight from YouTube? Yeah, yeah, let me, let me see if I can stumble through it. I'll, I'll try to be brief if I can. Yeah, go for it. Um, I'll share my screen. So I believe when you're in your Panopto editor, you have the ability to link in a YouTube stream. And so basically you'd create a short video where you have your comments, you know, maybe introduce the video. Um, and then you would link in that Panopto or that YouTube video, and then you could continue your comments afterwards. And so I'll just pull up an example here and under edit, I think under streams. No. Nope. Oh. Um, yeah, you can you cuts. can paste the you can paste the link within one of your videos. Yeah, and I think that might be the solution to it. Maybe it's Yeah, yeah. right there. Okay, so I can select the time and so what I'm doing is, you know, say at right say at 6 seconds basically. That's a good look. At 6 seconds I can link in a YouTube video here. And so I put the link to the video 
um, I can designate when I want it to start and end so that how long that clip is. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of my video will continue to be me. And so you'd make this video, you know, hey, this is Lynn, here's the video, introduce it, link in the YouTube video, and then you could um, finish your comments afterwards. And so that's how you can set that up. I'm not an expert in it, but I'm pretty sure it can, you can run it that so way. So ba basically link, um, link through the editing feature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That I'll try that. I so far I've just been showing the clip on my screen while I'm also recording myself within Panopto. So I have a you know a Google screen with the video playing, but that it doesn't look that good for students. It's hard to view. We're we're analyzing a couple movie scenes. So I'm gonna try this way. Yeah, Thanks and this will improve me. audio and be able to provide captions to students who want them to. I just posted the link to the Panopto help guides on how to embed a YouTube video into a Panopto session, too. Okay. Any other questions? So yeah, I guess as far as file management, I would highly suggest using your my folder and then creating subfolders or creating a new course on your desktop and uh, on your dashboard and um, doing that. What else we got? So that's kind of the end of my presentation, but we'll take other questions. We've got lots of time. Ursula, I just emailed you that link. Thank you. I have a somewhat unrelated question, not really, but it's just all oh, great hair, sorry. <laughs> the share options in uh, Panopto. I always make sure that I choose uh, share to everyone or anyone with the link, right? I just don't know what that means. I know what specific people means. That's limited to the course in which the Panopto video was created. If it wasn't a specific course, anyone, I assume anyone can see it, right? So yeah, we'll go in here real quick. And Jerry's better at describing this as me than me. Um, but if I was to go in here and hit the share options, it comes up with this uh, from the get go. So mm -hmm. only specific people uh, have this. But if I hit the drop down menu, uh, you'll get these options. And sometimes you'll get a student that says, I can't see the video or, or several of them even. And it's because your link uh, uh, who has access has been uh, limited. And so these are the options you have. Mm -hmm. um, and so usually, I, I believe we do this one. Is that correct, Jerry? Anyone at your organization with the link? Well, there, there's two choices on there that are, that, are, that are useful, and there's two that you never pick. The two you always use are either anyone at your organization with the link, which means they have to be logged into, into Panopto, which means they've got to log into Canvas to view the video. So if you say anyone at your organization with the link, that means only people who can log into Canvas can view the link. And if they're not logged into Canvas, they can't view the video. Okay. Anyone with the link means that if you have somebody at Western Washington University that you want to have them view the video, you want to make sure you set it for that. If you say anyone at your organization, then that means anyone at your organization that clicks on the my videos or on the available to me are gonna, is going to see your video, whether they want to or not. And there are literally thousands of videos like that. And then public on the web is exactly that. If somebody finds the link, they can click on it and watch it, regardless of whether you let them or not. And now, so, and now anybody, let's say at uh, the end of the quarter, um, Anybody that had the link, we'll say at your organization, it, whoops, hang on. Anyone with the link, let's say she, they have classes and then at the end we dump all those people out of the classes, they no longer have the link, is that correct? 
That's correct, but we don't we don't clear out our Canvas classes. So, right. If if that that means that anyone at the organization with the link means exactly that. If they can log into Canvas and they have say bookmark the link to view in in you know and they don't clear their bookmarks out, then you you know in a year or two or three they could still see that video if it's still available and that link is still valid. That's this one here that's correct or anyone with the link it, it doesn't matter either one so you do if, if you want to yeah so we're saying to choose which one of these two either either one is fine I always say choose anyone with the link because if they're going to download the video as a podcast and view it later on they're gonna need to have that access so I would say anyone with the link because you're providing them the link they're not just going out and searching you know, Jerry Troop's videos in Panopto, they're going to have to go out and they're going to have to have access to the link that you provide them. And what we've noticed over time is students will email themselves the video. And then if they're not logged in on their phone, when they click that link, because they're not logged into Canvas, maybe now they have an access issue. Now they can't view that video. So now you're getting an email request for the student to watch that video. So it increases your ac access um, for students if you just use anyone with the link. But in, mm -hmm. you know, to repeat again, don't click anyone at your organization. That's become a pain in the tail for a lot of folks because now they have to wade through these videos. And one little tip that I learned is you're able to create the share settings for an entire folder of videos rather than individual videos. I learned this the hard way after navigating and managing all the specific videos and screwing them up one by one. We can actually do that at the folder level. Rick, do you wanna show that? Uh, I'm not even sure how to do that, to be honest. Just click out of this and then at the top right there, there's that link there. Yeah, that will dictate the permissions for all of the videos in the folder rather than doing them one by one, which is nice. Wow, that's cool. What about statistics? If students are not logged into Canvas, does Panopto still collect the stats on who is viewing the videos for how long? Not who, it shows up as an anonymous user. But if they're logged into Canvas, then I can see the names with the top viewers and... Yeah, that's correct. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. see what else we got okay can I ask one more question yeah. um, could you re review and I, I apologize I should know this and I don't can you review um, how to find your YouTube um, videos you've created for training purposes I, I did a search the other day and I, I was having trouble finding because I think that you I know I know Ben recorded one for um, creating Zoom classes, for example, um, and I had trouble finding those. Do I, do I have to search for SFCC or IT or what is yep. your channel name? I, I guess. think it's CCS eLearning. Okay. I'll put a link in the chat. Okay, thank you. But you know, everybody's algorithm, it looks like Caleb beat me to it. Everybody's algorithm is a little different. When I search something, it might pop up. And when you search it, it might be five pages oh. down. So um, Caleb's got the link in there. That's why it keeps giving me links to poetry when I ask for Exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> a quick question. Yeah. Yeah, this is Rosie from Music. So my classes are all applied hands-on, you know, uh, classes uh, that I use the Panopto recordings. And so I use Panopto recordings also to grade them on their viewings. And sometimes in the analysis of the stats, it'll show that they watched the whole video, but only says they completed 74% of it. So then I give them out of the 10, I'll give them a 7.4 uh, points on that system for that week. But then my students said that they actually listened to the recording or watched their video at 1.5 speed. So they're actually looking at it faster than in real time. And so they say they complete it, but the analysis says they've only watched three quarters of it. 
So my question is, can you see in there if they have sped up their viewing to 1.5 speed or how do I know like they've finished the video and have, have viewed the whole thing uh, when, when, when they are doing it in fast, faster time than real time? Yeah, good question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I've, I've never heard of that uh, three quarter time, if you will. Yeah, I hadn't either until uh, yesterday. And so I thought, well, I would ask that question here today for the experts who might know that. Yeah, that's a great question. And students love to watch your videos at 1.5 or double speed, depending on how fast you speak. Um, I think the thing to look at is percent complete, mm -hmm. not minutes watched, because like you said, you, we, we are unable to identify whether or not they watched it at 1.5 or two double speed. But if you're, you know, 20 minute video, um, if they're only watching 10 or 15 minutes, but it shows 100% complete in the analytics, I think that's what your indicator needs to be there rather than minutes watched. Okay. All right, I'll do that. I, I, I was not aware of that until yesterday, but I've had many times where I've looked in and uh, it says that, you know, they watched the full minutes of it, but he uh, said 34% was completed. And so I'm like, okay, you know, so that's good to know. Yeah, good question though. Yeah, this is kind of interesting because we, I'd probably say easily once a month or once every couple of weeks, we stumble on something like what you just came up with. Hey, why is it this way? And I had something the other day where an instructor sent in a video uh, to be captioned and the front part of the video was um, he had pasted something from another instructor and then like 14 minutes to the end was his. And when I sent it in to get captioned, it's like the first 14 minutes weren't captioned. And so we're, we're asking Panopto, what's, what's the deal? So Stuff like this always throw at us because we can make it better uh, if we find out these little idiosyncrasies. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes. If you guys got any more questions. Hey, Rick, I'm gonna pop out. I'm gonna go to that other session, get ready for that. All right, Jerry, thank you for your help. Later. Bye. Okay, well, with that, I guess we'll just, we'll call it good. Thank you for attending. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw it at us, and we'll do our best to get back to you as fast as we can.